Hi everyone, MC here and I'm back with another process video for you. Um, prior to starting the video I had spritzed this piece of white Swiss dot paper, so it's the one that's kind of slightly embossed texture on it, um, and I just sprayed that with my bubblegum dilutions ink. Um, I wasn't really sure what I was going to use it for, I was just kind of playing around with the, the colours of the ink, but decided to keep it. Um, so I do end up actually using it on this layout. Here you'll see me just going through the paper pad, um, just choosing different papers that I want to layer together and I'm just using my scissors to cut those apart and again this is a photo from me of me and my boyfriend at my um, birthday party um, and the look on his face is just hilarious he's looking at me just like what um, <laughs> I'll talk about that more uh, when I talk about the story behind um, the layout um, when I was doing my um, layout um, the whole share for this like um, package of goodies I got um, I fell in love with this card um, it says you're weird I like you um, I was going to use it um, on a birthday card for my boyfriend but then when I got my photos printed and I saw this photo I was like yep that's the one um, I really love this frame as well that came in the die cut collection and it works perfectly in framing the words on that card so um, really really love that and then there's a large ampersand that was also in the die cut pack and I really wanted to use that as well so I've kind of taken some of my main elements um, from the die cut pack um, now I'm just going through my stash of roller stamps and these are all that I'm pulling out are just the fray stamps so there's the one from Studio Calico Wonderlust there's the Amy Tangerine, I think there's the Maggie Holmes, and there's the Dear Lizzie. I think I have most of them that have come out actually, I really love those little phrase stamps. And because as you all know from my previous videos, um, I do like to stamp words in the background. So I'm just using my um, Hero Arts Neon Ink, and this is the bright pink one, and I'm just using that to stamp the words around that ink, ink splodge. And again, I know vaguely where things are going to go, so I'm just adding those on. And then I'm going to take my um, black ink, and again just add those around um, the cluster. And because I've got the blank ink on there already as well, and um, that works really well. And as I said, it, <laughs> it, I just have to not kind of worry too much about um, where words are going to be. And, you know, sometimes I don't quite know where to stop. Um, you know whether I'm <laughs> gone a bit overboard or maybe encroached a bit too much into the white space of the page um, but I really um, like how it looks I apologize that I was actually texting while doing this layout which is kind of rude of me and I do apologize for that but I do like to always have my phone on because I'm normally normally listening to a podcast or something um, while I'm scrapping because in the caravan I don't have a TV or anything and that's where I'm crafting here. Um, I am just inking around everything with the black ink just because it'll just make everything pop a little bit more and I really really love that frame. I wish I had more of those frames. Um, I gotta say that die cut pack was really great. It had a really good mix of words, images, um, sort of text pieces as well so yeah it was a really good um, piece I was actually taking a photo there um, as well I think I was sending that um, to Carrie who's also on the um, creative team here with me <laughs> we were kind of talking about um, layouts and stuff we were doing and I love that I love that this you know hobby is so interactive with other people and the community out there is so fab so now it's time to start committing and start sticking stuff down and this is this way you just have to go for it <laughs> I mean I used to spend you know 10-15 minutes fussing about where I'm going to put all the paper what I'm going to do um, but actually I just use a little bit of my ATG adhesive on there and I can move it around if I need to you know worst case scenario like I said in the previous videos you can pull it off um, I want to use this ampersand as part of my title um, so I'm just trying to work out with the placement of that and where I'm going to put the you know the words of my title. I'm just actually even using my ATG just to stick that frame down. 
doesn't need too much um, glue to it because it's tucked down there behind the photo. Um, I pull out some um, washi tape and this was the American Crafts DIY washi tape and it's where you get several different patterns um, on a roll which is really good because you get like horizontal stripes, chevron, things like that. As you'll see in this video the problem is is sometimes you want two of the same bits <laughs> and you probably get about I think you probably got about six inches of each and then it sort of goes on to the next pattern. So I did have to unroll um, quite a bit of the tape just so I could get another bit of that um, um, striped bit there. Um, but I then, just, at least with washi tape, you can just stick it back on the roll and it, you know, it will still be fine when you go to use it next. So I'm just fussing here a little bit with where I'm placing that washi tape. And I do love with washi tape, you know, you can just move it around lots of times on your layout. So I'm just going to use um, my 3D pop dots so, um, just to stick the ampersand down because I do want to just raise it up off the page a little bit and then I'm going to place that down so I can start working my title around it. And As I said I do like to add a little bit of dimension um, to my page so the title for this layout is um, you um, should have read the T's and C's which is terms and conditions. <laughs> um, you might think that's quite an odd um, layout title but <laughs> basically again this is a running joke between me and my boyfriend that um, you know I'm hard work I'm gonna put it out there I'm hard work to be around and um, often I'll say to him it was all there in the terms and conditions you didn't read the terms and conditions um, you know, like if if we have like little jolly arguments, and I'll be like, I win, and he's like, you always win. I was like, yep, that was in terms and conditions. Um, and so it's a little running joke between us <laughs> that he should have read the terms and conditions of dating me better. You know, it's a bit like the um, you know, the Apple iTunes whatever where account one, where there's like twenty thousand pages, and I think there's probably only about three or four people in the whole world that have ever sat and read them. And we probably all are signing our lives away when we just tick agree. Um, <laughs> and that's why you always laugh with him. If you don't read the terms and conditions, you didn't actually know what you were signing up for. And when I had this um, photo printed um, from my birthday, um, it was from the hat party I had for my 30th birthday. <laughs> the look on his face and the way he's looking at me was just like, oh my god, what is she doing? What does she look like? What is going on? What have I been roped into? I'm sitting in a pub at like four o'clock in the afternoon wearing a hat. It's all very bizarre. <laughs> and so that look on his face is just pretty hilarious. So um <laughs> but I really I really love how that looks. So I've just pulled um the letters um for the rest of that title and that's from the again from the Highline collection from Basic Grey. And they all the little tiny alphas that you get on that one sheet, and that's a great way of doing it. It's a pain to store. I'm going to put it out there. It is a pain to store, but the letters are really great. And I had this similar size letters when I used to get um, a Project Life kit from Studio Calico, and I really loved the size of them. Um, but I stopped subscribing to that, and I was like, oh, I'm sort of running low on the ones I'd kind of stashed away. So when I saw that Basic Grey were bringing out these sheets, it's a 12 by 12 sheets, and I think you get six different alphas. You just saw it a moment ago. I think there's six different colours on there. Um, as I said, the only problem is it's a bit of a pain in the butt to store because if it gets you know creased or anything like that, they do tend to come off. Um, I decide that I'm going to add um, my title over the photo. There's a little bit of dead space in the photo there, and I really liked it, you know, something for a little bit of a change really. I did realise when I was pulling out the words for my title that I actually um, missed off one of the words, which is always. So here you'll see me just pulling it out and as you can see there is six different alphas on there. And yes they work great with the Highline collection but you can use them with anything else. And as you can see here they work really well with this collection pack as well which is the Fancy Pants Meology. So I'm just sticking that down and I think the title's not amazingly easy to read um, on video but actually in real life it's fine to read. I think it's just with like the different patterns and stuff behind it that makes it a little bit difficult. 
Um, I did have issues because I wanted to put T's and C's, so I wanted to put like the apostrophe S, um, but it looks stupid with the big fancy pants letters, so I do end up just using the little letters um, there that I use for the other part of the title. Um, I had to cut down, um, I think it was a S or a Z, just to make um, the comma there because I wanted it to punch right into right. I don't always bother with that, it's not something that <laughs> really, really worries me, but I did with this layout want that to just work. So I'm just using my wet glue to stick that photo down because I had only used glue in the middle because I wasn't sure what else I was going to type under it. Um, I just want to apologise also for the, the lighting is a little bit funny in this um, video. Um, I was filming this in my caravan at night and <laughs> I don't know, um, I have a lamp that um, is like shining on my page but sometimes when I'm working on it, I don't know if there's a reflective surface or something, it just kind of goes a little bit funny um, with the camera. So I apologise for that, but hopefully it isn't making it too distracting. So here I am pulling out um, these beloved sequins <laughs> that I keep going on and on and on about. And I'm just using my pokey tool to um, push them into an ink pad to um, add some colour. And there is kind of like an sort of burnt in design, sort of burnished um, pattern of the sequin on those and when you just push it in the ink that still does show up so again I'm just finding putting them on my pokey tool um, to push them into the ink pad is the best way to do that and then just using my wet glue to stick them down and I love them coloured and I love them wood so these um, little wood veneer sequins really can do no wrong <laughs> um, they probably will be relegated to um, the rest of um, my wood veneer pile for now just because I have used them on like the last four or five layouts so um, I did then decide after I'd stuck them down with the pink ones I wanted to add some green because um, that was kind of the main sort of colours that were working on this layout so I've just pulled out one of my green inks and then just placing them down. And I just kind of wanted a sort of scattered effect. Um, it's always one of those things you work really hard to make something look random. <laughs> and that's kind of what I've done here. Again, so I'm just using my poker tool and just sticking it into the back of the wood veneer um, and sticking those down. Um, I was quite worried when I put the green down because it was quite dark, but it did dry fine. It just took a little bit of a while to absorb um, into the ink compared to that neon ink. And so I'm just working away, sticking those down. And I really like how it works, you know, with the ink spots and stuff in the end. When I was doing the ink spots, if I'd have thought about it, I could have made them make that diagonal mark as well, because there's not really any ink spots up in that top corner. But, you know, I'm not too worried. Overall, it looks okay. So I've just kind of got to this point now, and I've decided that I need to get um, a piece of paper to mount it all on. So I did just pull this very old piece of paper from Basic Grey and I'm just cutting a little bit down off the side and the bottom of my layout just so I still keep that kind of the cluster in the top corner there. And as I said, this is just an old piece of paper <laughs> that's been in my stash for quite a while. Um, but as I said, the reverse side of that camera paper is also this kind of green colour. So I knew that that worked well and I've just mounted that over the top. So here are some close-up photos. Um, I hope you enjoy them and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again soon. Bye!